Welcome into the Barclay Rated Ball Show. Charleston Southern winners of three straight, and the Bucks will hit the halfway mark of conference play Saturday. A big one at the Buck Dome against rival Coastal Carolina. And Coach, last week we sat here and uh, some close losses. A week later, three close wins, and you're back to four and four in the league. Well, that's, we were riding home last night, and I was telling Ahmad Smith that you know we're we're two plays away from being in first place, and two plays away from being in seventh place. So it's you know it's it's. Uh, We've gotten it back to four and four. We've had to scrap and, and, and scrape and claw to get there, and, and, uh, but it's been good. Uh, this team continues to get better, and they, they compete with a great attitude, and we've, we've had a good, good three games. Get two road wins, too, a nice comeback at Campbell on Saturday. Hold on last night against Presbyterian. That's got to be a nice confidence builder to pull out a few of those games at the end. Yeah, it's really encouraging. We're getting a lot of in-game experiences, and uh, we've been successful in some, and some we haven't been as successful, and that's part of an inexperienced team and part of a young team and having a freshman point guard is you got to go through those growing pains uh, to get where you want to get. And We feel great, though. We, we, we uh, were able to hold on last night against a, a very good Presbyterian team and with a lot of talent and a lot of size and a veteran team and able to pull that one out. And, and then, you know, we played some really solid minutes at Campbell in the second half, and really show glimpses of the potential of this team and, and certainly the Liberty win, win. Every time we've played Liberty, it's been tough. Uh, they're so well coached and such a good team. So we, we're real fortunate to, to win three in a row and, and, and feel good about our progress and looking forward to, to uh, having a couple days on the practice floor. Winning streak start, as Coach said, with a win over Liberty last Thursday at the Buck Dome as we take a look at some highlights from that game and you had that game Saturday against UNC Asheville play Thursday against Liberty instead of Wednesday. How'd you use that extra day to prepare? Well, it was really good. We took, um, uh, we actually took Sunday and practiced right after the game and took Sunday and prepared for Campbell and then took Monday off and had two days to prepare for a very good Liberty team. So it was, we took advantage of having an extra day. Uh, Campbell's tough to, to to play against and, and um, so we wanted that extra day there and some just some great highlights here. Uh, nice to see uh, Melvin Brooks playing with the energy and the ability that he has and he's been a real asset for us here in the last couple games. Bucks had a really strong first half in this win over Liberty last Thursday to build a 14 point lead late in the first half. Liberty's able to uh, stay in the game here early on. It was a team that the Bucks beat in Lynchburg. It's a four point game at that point but then you go as guys go on a nice run to build a lead. Ruben King here going to eventually find Demetrius Pollard for a three, and Demetrius has really been steady for you guys of late. Demetrius has been a double-figure guy, and, uh, you know, his, his greatest asset isn't his scoring. His greatest asset is his feel for the game and his understanding of the game and, and his leadership. So Ruben's been great. Ruben's had a really solid senior year, and we're really excited about that. Demetrius gets inside for the hoop and the foul there. Bucks up by 12, end up taking a 14-point here, lead here with the basket, and really the story of the first half, you hold Liberty to 7 for 28 shooting, 25%, and you held Dawson in check too, just 2 for 10. Yeah, we, you know, obviously Dawson is a really good player, and it was a great addition for them midseason uh, to add a, you know, 15 points, 7 rebound guy in the middle of, of, the, of the year. All of us would like to do that, and, and certainly we played a really good, really good half, and uh, particularly defensively, we were really alert and alive defensively and making good passes there and uh, just felt good at halftime. Dunks for Aaron Wheeler and Javis Howard here early in the second half. Still have the Bucks in front by double digits. Liberty ends up getting hot from the outside. You see the dunk there from Dawson. They hit nine threes in the second half to rally and make it a game and a, another game that went down to the wire. It sure did. And, you know, we're real fortunate to, to uh, have built a lead at halftime because Liberty played so well in the second half. They really moved the ball well, stepped up and hit some timely shots. Uh, they, they were able to chip away at the lead and, and um, you know, just played well. We knew they are a tough opponent, a much improved opponent. And um, obviously we made some mistakes there in the second half and lost some defensive intensity and uh, allowed them to get going. And once they get going, they're a very capable team. Liberty took the lead here at one point. You guys run off six straight points, big time play by Aaron Wheeler going to the basket. Then he finds Javis for a dunk, and that was kind of a key little couple minute stretch to turn it back the other way. It really was to be able to to be able to come back after losing the lead, have a big lead, come back after losing the lead, and 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 to play that well was just a credit to our growth and our our maturing as a team. Uh, we still got a ways to go, but we're getting there. Ray Robinson's only three of the night, but a good time to hit one puts the Bucks up five. Real back and forth 
game here the last couple of minutes. Dawson hit some really tough threes. One here coming up that gives Liberty the lead. Javis had some nice buckets down the stretch as well. Big time to be able to throw it in and get a, get a post move and a post score. Uh, it was really a, a great benefit to us. That Dawson three gives Liberty a two-point lead. Aaron Wheeler ties the game here, had a chance at a three-point play, and it uh, ends up Liberty takes the lead back yet again on a Holmesley three, really back and forth here the last couple of minutes. Holmesley hits this one. They foul. Potter hits two clutch free throws, which you saw that again last night at PC. And you guys are able to get a, a one-point win with the stop here late when Dawson misses at the buzzer. And being so close in so many of these games to, to get one had to kind of be a relief, I would think, in some ways. Yeah, our, our execution was excellent late. And, and um, you know, Armel ste stepped up and hit two timely free throws and then did it again last night. And we want the ball in his hands late and feel great about uh, uh, his production on the free throw line to win us games. And uh, what a special player he's going to be. First in a three-game winning streak for CSU. You mentioned the extra day. Now you fast forward about 36 hours later to play Campbell. Quick turnaround. So we take a look at some highlights from that game as the Bucks went to Bowie's Creek, a game televised on the American Sports Network. And you talked about the preparation for Campbell, the matchup zone, and then the Princeton offense. A quick turnaround, a challenge to go on the road. Yeah, we, 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 uh, you need a lot of time to prepare for them because they're, they're so distinctively different. And uh, they can make you look really bad. Uh, they execute their Princeton offense very well. Their matchup zone is unlike anything else in the league. Um, and so it takes some time to prepare for them. And uh, I thought we got a better grasp of it the second half. The first half we kind of struggled because it's the first time all of these guys have faced a Campbell opponent and, and some adjustments at halftime and, and some, some uh, uh, just them seeing uh, how fast they move and how well they execute. Uh, really helped us in the second half. Chris Clemens is going to be a special player for, for Campbell. Makes a lot of plays and shows his athleticism there. And, and certainly we're in a fight. Campbell's playing really well, so we got to scrap and claw and, and stay in it. We're now, with these highlights, trying to stay in the game because they're making so many good plays. And um, we were able to cut it to uh, three or four at halftime, and, and uh, that was a big boost for us. Campbell got out to that 11-point lead, uh, led by Clemens, as you said, Danny Upchurch with the three there. Cuts it down to two. Ray Robinson left open. He had a big second half. It's his first three of the night there. It's a four-point game at halftime as Campbell hits a late three here. And you mentioned uh, the first time for these guys going up against that style of play. What was kind of the message at halftime? Just, just an emphasis on the fundamentals, just a reminder of how they play and stay beneath the ball and, and, and really work defensively as a team. You gotta stay, you gotta keep your head on a swivel uh, because it's coming all different angles and there's such good body movement, lots of ball screens, lots of fade screens. And um, you know, we did a much better job in the second half. And I was so impressed with Raymond Robinson in the second half to step up like that. We, we've known that Raymond is capable of that. And, He's become one of the best three-point shooters in the United States of America, shooting only almost 50% on the season and, um, you know, tops of the Big South, and he's been a very productive player for us. Campbell got up by six here early twice in the second half. You guys came back both times. Demetrius hits a three there. They end up pushing the lead back to about 10, and then about the eight-minute mark, the game uh, really changes. Armel Potter hits a three here. He had 12 of his 14 in the second half, Bucks had all five starters and double figures. And really, if you take out a couple of patches with turnovers, you played very well offensively for much of the game. We did, particularly in the second half. The last nine minutes, I think we scored almost 30 points, and we just kind of got it going. I thought our conditioning was a factor. I thought we've worked, or I know we've worked very hard to stay in great shape. And, you know, it's hard to run that type of Princeton defended because there's so much movement. And, you know, I thought our team uh, displayed that we're, in, that we're in really good shape, physical shape, and able to make shots down the stretch. If you're tired, you can't do that, Kev. You've got to be in, in really good shape to be able to execute down the stretch. Ray Robinson with three threes in less than two minutes. You mentioned his shooting 10th in the country in three-point percentage. A 19-2 to run that Demetrius Pollard finishes here, and you get an 82-75 to win. And a, a pretty satisfying bus ride home, especially when it's a noon game. Get to enjoy it a little bit. That was great. I love those noon games, and particularly on the road, when you're able to win those games on the road, it's a lot of fun. Raymond Robinson, to shoot the ball like he has, I think you guys knew he was talented, but 50% from three, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. You know, credit to Ray. During his year of sitting out after transferring over from the Citadel, he worked. Uh, he worked every day on his game, and he, he's gotten better. And uh, we think Ray even has some more steps to go, particularly with his defensive awareness and, 
it was his ability to handle the ball, but you know, he's become a clutch shooter. And uh, the best thing about Ray is his competitiveness. That is one competitive young man and he's unafraid. Uh, you know, you gotta be, you, we tell our guys all the time, you gotta be willing to fail before you, before you can succeed. And he has no fear of failure. And uh, he just hangs in there, hangs in there, hangs in there. And uh, a lot of good stuff has happened for Ray. Some timely shots for Ray Robinson that went over Campbell. He had some more last night in the win at Presbyterian. And we'll take a look at the highlights of that game after this on the Barclay Ray Boss Show. And Whitfield finds Hamer in the corner, almost taken away by Wheeler. It's loose, and Howard has it. Up ahead for Robinson, who lays it in. Turnover leads to a Ray Robinson layup. He's got eight of CSU's last ten, and the Bucks lead by three. Pollard, double team now, trying to get away from it near half court. Finds Pollard at the left elbow. One dribble, right-handed leaner is good. Potter stayed patient against the double team, and Pollard drops it in. He's got 13, Bucks in front by seven, 70 seconds left. A 19-2 run. Brooks in the game for the first time for Charleston Southern. Opposite side, passing against this zone to Robinson. Finds Wheeler at the elbow, drives by and throws down a two-handed dunk. Aaron Wheeler with the poster. 59-56, Bucks. Terry, left side three for the tie, way off the mark, and air ball. Climbs off the glass. Wheeler sprints for Charleston Southern. Right side pass, Robinson. His three is a swish. Ray Robinson from downtown. The Bucks on top by six. Welcome back to the Barclay Ray DeVos Show as we take a look at the Bucks win at Presbyterian last night. And Coach, you go on the road trying to get to four and four in league play. Same for Presbyterian. Uh, important game for both teams. Yeah, it really is. And Presbyterian's a much improved team. Very talented team and well coached and you know, such a challenge to play against. Again, a different style of play, playing 40 minutes of zone, a straight 2-3 zone, and, um, you know, they're tough to play against, and Murray is, is one of the best competitors in the country. Deshaun Murray for PC, uh, leading scorer in the Big South, almost 21 points a game. Bucks did a pretty good job keeping him in check, just 5 of 14 shooting. You guys opened up hot, and you get out to a 14-9 lead. You hit some threes early, a dunk there from Aaron Wheeler, and a, a pretty good start offensively. It sure was, and... You know, we've, 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 we've able to move the ball. Uh, Patrick is such a weapon from three, and anytime we can get his feet set, that's a real advantage for the Bucks. And, um, you know, we felt real good about our start. It's about a five, six point game pretty much the whole way. Bucks did get an eight point lead late in the game. Did a good job on the glass, and Melvin Brooks was definitely a part of that. Uh, he's getting better and better. He's such a ball chaser. You know, at 6'6 six, six and 220 pounds, he has the ability to rebound out of his space. He doesn't just rebound straight up. He has the ability to rebound in different areas, and, and that's a much-needed skill. PC with the lead here late in the first half. Murray gets the block shot, leads to a layup on the fast break, ends up going into halftime tied up. Raymond Robinson gets a nice little bounce on the three there. He got hot in the second half as you're watching some highlights here early in that second half, and it's kind of the type of game you guys have had at PC the last few years, tight and just comes down the last few minutes. You know, we, we thought we, we had a chance with that game, up eight with three minutes to go, to put put a little bit more space there and, and credit Pre Presbyterian for battling back and, and, and really just hanging in there and making some big plays late to, to make it a very close game. So we said this is just a one to two possession game pretty much the whole way. Ray Robinson started 0 for 4 from 3, then hits five in a row. Wallace finds him here and Ray's just gotten on some really unbelievable tears this season in games. Yeah, he's, he's very streaky and um, you know we're really working on him being a little bit more consistent and, and we'd like him to be, be more aggressive offensively. Uh, you know, 10 shots a game and you're making 50% of them, why not shoot 15 of them? And um, we, we, we think Ray's doing really well. Wheeler finds Robinson here for his fifth three of the game gives the Bucks a six point lead. They get back to two. Aaron drives inside for a dunk. He had 20 points, a career high, 10 rebounds as well for a double double. And guys made a lot of big shots at this point of the game. Patrick Wallace with one here to make it a seven point lead. And eventually you get it out to eight. PC is able to make some plays. Potter does get the steal here. And you think maybe you're going to be able to pull away here late, but PC wouldn't go away. No, they sure wouldn't. And, 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 uh, you know, we needed some free throws and we weren't able to connect from the free throw line. 
And uh, their press was terrific, and, and they were very aggressive late and good ball movement by them. Well-coached team and a highly competitive team. Uh, you know, Coach Nybert is a real competitive guy, and, and his team takes on his personality very well. Again, at great execution and getting the right guys to the free throw line. Just one of those nights, they're not able to connect. And actually, PC takes the lead right here, uh, up by one with 15 seconds to go. And we put it in the hands of Armel and uh, call 1-4 flat. And, you know, he's able to get, get, to, the, get to, the, uh, to the paint and then step up. And when we needed the free throws the most, he stepped up and showed great courage and, uh, and made good plays there late. That says something about him, doesn't it? To have that rough patch for about 60 seconds there, whereas a team, you guys missed a, a good deal of free throws, and then it's pretty much the game on his shoulders there. He's able to kind of collect himself and hit both. You know, he's done it a lot this year. We've, we've given him the opportunities to have the ball in his hands late, and, and he's responded. So you guys win it. You come back home. Now you're 4-4. Four and four. You get Coastal at home on Saturday, and we know they're always a big challenge. Oh, Coastal's so good. And, you know, Cliff Ellis is a wily veteran and an experienced coach, and, uh, they got great size and, and great ability to score. They're veteran. They're they're uh, an experienced team, and we'll certainly have our hands full. But it, you know, it's here in the Bug Dome, and we've been pretty good here and over the last four or five years. And and so we're really looking forward to having a good Coastal Carolina team in here. You know, it'll be the last time they're in here because they're moving on to the Sun Belt, and um, we've just really enjoyed competing against them. They're a classy team and classy coach, and very difficult to prepare for. And I think the world of Coach Ellis and and enjoy competing against them. It's been a fun rivalry with CSU and Coastal. Make sure to be here Saturday at 5.30. Both teams trying to get the 5-4 and four in conference play at the halfway mark.